The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. one God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen. There is an iconic scene from J.R.R. Tolkien's epic novel, Lord of the Rings, that has a particular resonance for today. As you likely recall, the protagonist Frodo Baggins, a most unlikely hero, has come into possession of a magic ring that the Dark Lord Sauron wants. Gandalf, the great wizard of Middle-earth and mentor to Frodo, knows <coughs> the ring must not get into Sauron's hands, that Frodo will have to go through danger and hardship to deposit the ring in the fiery volcano of Mordor that will finally release its power. Frodo does not want the responsibility and he does not think he can do it. Gandalf urges Frodo to have courage. The ring came to you for a reason. There's comfort in that. Frodo responds, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish this had never happened. Gandalf replies, so do all who live in such times. But while we cannot choose the times we live in, says Gandalf, we can choose how to respond to the time we are given. Reluctantly, Frodo embarks on an incredible journey where, with the help of a cast of characters and creatures and other forces working for good, Frodo prevails and peace is restored to all of Middle-earth. We face a critical time today. There is a sense of hopelessness about the future, especially about climate change, and especially for our young people. The future feels doomed, as if we're helpless to do anything about it. And we have arrived at a scary and unprecedented inflection point. The very existence of our civilization is at stake. But we must not give up hope, because we 
are people of faith. That's what we do. And the future is not set in stone. We don't know what's going to happen. There are forces for good at work in the world, even in the darkest hours. One of those forces is marine biologist, policy expert, and author, Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson. She hosts a podcast called How We Can Save a Planet. In a recent interview, I heard her say, we have most of the solutions we need at our fingertips for all these climate challenges, whether it's agriculture or green building retrofits or bike lanes or composting or wind energy in the ocean or farming seaweed or whatever. We know how to do this stuff, she says. We just have to do it. Her mission has become to figure out how she can welcome more people into this work, to get people excited, to help them find where they fit. She says it's this incredible time in human history where we all have to figure out how we're going to show up, how we're going to be helpful. You know this, she doesn't say if we're going to show up, but how. For a scientist, she uses the word love a lot. She loves the oceans. She loves human beings. She loves the future. I find her love and her science and her hope infectious. Speaking of infectious hope, we are in that season. We are living into the ramifications of the resurrection, of new life bursting forth unexpectedly out of death. And as we have been witnesses, God can make a way out of no way. But God needs our help. Each of us has agency. Each of us can do something, and together, we can have a profound effect on the future of the world, but not if we get mired in doom, or worse, indifference. I don't know about you, but I was just blown away by the instant community that formed around the solar eclipse. People all over the country, people here at Holy Comforter, gathered effortlessly, spontaneously, to share in the sheer wonder and joy of the cosmos. We gathered to experience the miracle, and in so doing, each of us felt a part of something so much greater than us. So how is it that so many people can come together across division to praise, to be awed, to be together, held by this stunning example of creation, and yet, maybe even the next day, fall so easily into despair and abdication. I am bolstered and inspired by a new documentary television series on PBS called A Brief History of the Future. Hosted by Ari Wallach, he considers himself a professional futurist. He likes to say future is actually a verb. As a consultant to private corporations and government agencies to help shape their long-term planning for the effects of climate change, his favorite question is, what would it look like if we got it right? The series looks at a wide variety of farmers and technologists and just ordinary people who are getting it right. One of them is farmer and activist Karen Washington, who goes by Mama K. Siri is talking to me. Um, from her farm in upstate New York, she has been doing this since 1985, she prepares herb and vegetable seedlings to send to hundreds of community gardens in New York City. 
She wonders why in the greatest country in the world there is so much food waste. Did you know that in the U.S. we throw out about one-third of all food? That's tens of millions of tons of food a year. She believes the land and our ability to grow food are where our power lives. If there is a climate disaster, she says, the ones who know how to grow food are the ones who will survive. She says we've got to reimagine our relationship with the land from one of ownership to one of stewardship. And that takes us conveniently to our gospel passage today. We must learn to be good shepherds, good stewards. Jesus helps us out with this image of stewardship. The good shepherd knows his sheep, protects and loves them, and ultimately is willing to sacrifice himself for them. In the Greek, the word for good that Jesus uses, kalos, means ordered, sound, noble, true, ideal, competent, and faithful. Jesus models for us ways to be good stewards of the gifts that we have been giving, the first and foremost being the gift of creation. I wonder, can we become ordered, sound, noble, true, competent, faithful stewards to this fragile earth, our island home? My first real awareness of climate change was watching the documentary in 2006 called An Inconvenient Truth. The film presented the repercussions of global warming and the human toll in causing it, and it was deeply sobering for me. But the film was optimistic about the future. However, that was nearly two decades ago, and since that time, carbon emissions have increased more than 20%. 2023 was the warmest year on record by far. Extreme weather events are happening more frequently and more severely causing homelessness, devastation, and death. And although scientists warn of climate tipping points, there is still optimism. If we all do one thing. Today at Holy Comforter, our creation care team is offering an amazing array of educational and fun activities for our Earth Sunday celebration. You can go on a bird identification walk. You can learn how to generate electricity from a bicycle. You can recycle sneakers. Do you know how many pair I have in my closet? You can collect some native plants that will be given to you for free to plant in your own yard that hold back the invasive species. Please don't miss this opportunity to learn about one thing, one thing you can do. None of us asked to be born into this time, but each of us has a responsibility for or a complicity in the fate of the earth. In the words from the first letter of John today, we hear, little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but by truth and action. Truth, action. There are forces for good at work in the world what might happen if we join those forces and do our part? All it takes is a little love. Jesus commands us 
to love one another as he loves us. We can do that. We can love one another by loving the earth, by making choices that will ensure her future and ours, and that of our children, and our grandchildren, and their children. It is a tall order, but if we each do one small thing, we can make a significant difference. And with our help, God will make a way out of no way. As you walk out of the service today, hold close the words of our closing hymn. Let it be the prayer that sustains you on your journey. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the facing of this hour.